Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll be having a look at the G latest GFS, GM, ESMWF and GFS ensembles for the upcoming mini sort of little heat wave before we get a polar plunge for the Easter weekend. Do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe. Now we're going to start off looking through the GFS uh, and 12, uh, the 12Z um, and it is a very cold run um, especially come uh, Good Friday into the Easter weekend, it is looking increasingly likely we're going to see a proper polar plunge of air after a quite, uh, quite decent first few uh, days of this uh, upcoming week where we could be seeing temperatures get to maybe 22, 23 degrees before it's looking like there could be snow quite widely over the Easter weekend. Now, we'll run for this current GFS run. And you can see what's going to give these quite warm temperatures are these southwesterly winds. Now, this time of the year, uh, southwesterly winds are going to allow for quite warm conditions, especially further southwards, um, uh, uh, apart from coastal areas. Coastal areas will remain cool because the air is coming directly off the sea, and that's going to mean temperatures going to be uh, stopped a little bit from rising much above maybe 15 degrees. But inland and where uh, where we under where and close you are to this higher pressure, we could be seeing 20, 21, maybe 22 or even 23 degrees on Monday, Tuesday uh, and Wednesday. Now in the north, we're always gonna, uh, it's always going to be on the north, north side of the jet. Now we see the black line is roughly where the jet stream is, um, where that low pressure is. We're going to have a, a weather front between this uh, very milder and the colder. Air. And it is looking like we're going to see a lot of rain over northwestern areas uh, and especially over Scotland as well. And there is a yellow warning that I looked back on my last video at where we could be seeing quite a lot of rain. Again, it's not unusual for these areas that under the yellow warning to see a lot of rain, but it's going to be quite persistent over the next few days. But as we run through, by Wednesday, we are starting to put a northerly wind down over parts of northern uh, England and Scotland. Uh, if you have a look at the 850 HP temperatures, you can see very warm still in the south. That's why Wednesday could still be quite a warm day. But further northwards, temperatures are going to start to drop. And come sort of Wednesday afternoon, we could be in a scenario where parts of Scotland maybe only be 9, 10 degrees, where parts of southern England could still be 20, 22, 23, 24 degrees, potentially. But this higher pressure is heading towards Greenland. And whilst that's going to allow is northerly winds to take over. So by Good Friday, we have a northeasterly airflow. It's not brutally cold yet, but quite cold air is starting to look, come in from the northeast. Now come Easter Saturday, warmer air and more milder air is starting to come around the higher pressure. But this is as the high pressure moves toward Greenland and you see these bitterly cold air over Greenland. It's pretty much the last remaining brutally cold air over towards the North Pole is heading to the UK on this current GFS run. Now other GFS runs do go for uh, similar scenarios but this GFS really does go quite cold. So we do have a bit of a milder interlude uh, overnight Saturday into Sunday before the northerly winds really come, come tumbling down uh, on Easter Sunday. You look at that cold front 20 degree cold front there going from around 5 degrees at 850 hpa to minus 20 over towards iceland wherever you see that cold front there's going to be some very heavy precipitation now over hills that's very much likely to fall as snow um but start as rain and falling as snow on the back edge over hills we're likely to see quite a decent accumulations if this does come off um, and with the increasing sun strength and very cold air mass it's going to allow for a lot of instability which means when this air mass does take over, it's going to go quite cold at the surface. Not, not as brutally cold as if this were in January. If this was in January, this would be sort of record-breaking cold spell, similar to the sort of beast from the east, but from the north instead. Um, but in April, what it's going to allow is the convection to be a bit more. So over hills, we could see a lot of, an, a lot of snow. Um, wherever we do see sunshine, though, it will allow the temperatures to rise to maybe 7, 8, 9 degrees, um, and rapidly thaw any snow that does fall. But if you do remain under cloud and under and with these cold upper airs, temperatures in the daytime may only be three, four, five degrees with heavy, frequent convective showers. We could be seeing some very heavy snow showers where we see some areas seeing a few centimeters in the space of 10 or 20 minutes. Um, 
some very convective sort of squally showers um, and to lower levels it's more likely to be hail or growl but that can still provide some very very um, difficult conditions to be out in and painful conditions if we do see hail we saw a lot of hail with the recent polar maritime air mass this air mass is going to be even colder so uh, apart from the hills there still could be snow to lower levels but it's more likely to be grab on hail it's difficult at this stage as we don't know the exact dew points and upper air temperatures but definitely wintry conditions and with this gfs one we do remain under that minus 10 for a good couple days again it's always going to be warmed up by the uh, by the april sun but we keep this and then we see a scenario where an area of low pressure develops within that and this could provide a very big snow event on the 8th of april now again this is a bit quite far away so it's difficult to say whether this does develop similar i've seen people comparing it to 1981 april where we saw, where we saw 10 15 centimeters of snow in central england now that was again from a very similar scenario to this um but with that um it all fell very quickly and thawed very quickly so it will if we do see anything like that it will be very temporary uh, situations remember it is april the sun uv level is getting maybe four or five on, on the index which means any sunshine is going to be rapidly thawing any uh, wintry precipitation but it could still provide some very treacherous and unpleasant conditions and over hills we could be seeing some decent accumulations of snow with this in the longer term we remain with this northerly airflow the very cold air doesn't uh, does eventually seep away but we remain with a sort of northwesterly airflow and by the end of the run we're again going into a more of a northerly plunge this time the colder air is more to our west so it's more of a northwesterly wind which again will provide snow hail growl pool showers not quite as cold but still a lot of instability around so still we'll see frequent uh, showers with quite cold temperatures now we'll run through the current GEM run, see what it shows. Very similar pattern over the next couple of days before we start to pull in those northerly winds by the weekend. And we see that cold northerly plunge, brutally cold air moving down. And again, I see people say if this were January, if this were January, we would see some of the coldest temperatures we've had since the beast from the east. If not colder than that, uh, it would be brutally cold. Um, minus 10 getting through the colder air is a little bit further west on this run but we're still getting some very cold conditions through again if this was december january we wouldn't be seeing temperatures get above freezing widely um for a good few days um, and this does is very reminiscent of december 2010 where we saw the cet for december below freezing so that means the average temperature in england for the whole of december was below freezing and i know many of you will remember that and that was uh a very very rare occurrence and we're seeing a very similar syn synoptic pattern to that right now but in uh, but in April but we remain even to day 10 in a very cold air mass even on this GM run so it's just looking like we're going to be setting up quite a cold period of weather now if I look at the ECMWF again a very similar pattern and then we go into that northerly wind we see that northerly plunge of air and it does look like on all these runs we are going very cold now the ecmwf does have more of a northwest a north easterly flow sorry which allows milder air especially for the south to come in so we do see quite cold air especially in the north but further south and southeast uh, we do see warmer air starts in encro encroach back in now this is the midnight run as the midday run is not going to come out for another hour or two um simply because we're going into some british summertime which means the ecmwf run is delayed a little bit uh, it will be delayed by an hour so we'll be coming out fully until about 8 p.m so I, I do want to get this video out a bit earlier than that so we're looking at the midnight run from last night so perhaps this is a little bit uh, outdated but i still showed you the potential scenarios that there are now if we have a look at the latest gfs ensembles um it hasn't fully updated yet but it shows the next 10 days at least so what we're really interested in um longer longer than that's very uncertain but you can see generally quite warm over the next couple of days in london then we see a initial colder front as the winds veer northerly to around average feeling quite cool but we do see that plunge as that cold front comes through you can see some of the ensemble members going down to minus 10 minus 15 that hfs operation going down to minus 10 and it's not an outlier there are two three four five six ensemble members going similar to that but very few going above minus five so it's pretty pretty much nailed on we're going to be seeing this sort of northerly plunge whether it's brutally cold like that gfs operational run or whether it's just 
uh, we're going to be quite cool with suppressed daytime temperatures, some wintry showers, especially over hills, is yet to be determined exactly. But it's looking very, very interesting, and it's looking pretty, pretty treacherous um, uh, for this sort of Easter period. Luckily, though, once the stay-at-home order is lifted tomorrow, and you can meet in rule of six outdoors, uh, at least in the UK um, and in England, we're going to have some good two or three pleasant days. So over the next two or three days, if you are planning to meet up with friends in your groups of six, outdoor in a park um, or in your garden, try and get it done in the next two or three days, um, as it is looking like the temperatures are going to be cold, wintry, windy um, for the following week after that. So if you are planning to get together with people, make sure you do it in the next couple of days um, as it is looking like towards that Easter weekend it's going to get very, very cold um, and you do not want to be outside um, if, when we do see sort of hail and snow showers as it's going to be, one minute it's going to be nice, uh, nice but cool sunshine the next minute will be brutally cold and under some of these convective showers we're going to see some very interesting statistics from local weather stations where they will say the temperature is 9, 10 degrees and it drops to maybe 2 or 3 degrees in the space of 10 minutes uh, as uh, convective showers come through but yeah, could be some very interesting conditions coming up and if we have a look at the new snow depth, um, you can see a lot of snow depth spikes. So there's a decent chance that even areas in the south, in London, low-lying areas do see some wintry precipitation. Now, I wouldn't say there's going to be a lot of accumulations. There could be accumulations overnight. And there could be accumulations if you do see some persistent snow falling onto frozen surfaces after an overnight frost. But generally in the day, it is looking too mild. Um, uh, and too, uh, and, the, and the surfaces will be probably too warm um, with too much of strong sunshine to see a lot of accumulating snow. Now, with the he very heavy showers, with hail, gravel, and all that, there is still a decent chance we do see accumulating snow, uh, including accumulating snow and wintry, wintriness over hills, but to low lying areas, less so. But again, you can't rule it out. One last thing I did want to show before I have a look at some precipitation charts and temperature charts is the uh, midnight run of the GFS Ensemble. So you can see a lot of people have pointed this out. This here is uh, Ensemble member number 12, and this is probably the most extreme GFS Ensemble run I've ever seen. Um, in the winter, you'd say um, this is very much a massive outlier, showing a colder than the beast from the east at 850 hpa but this is in april april and it's showing temperatures in london getting down to minus 22 minus 23 at 850 hpa um further north it's even colder um and that is truly exceptional it's truly arctic um and if we did see that in the winter i would guarantee you we'd be seeing all-time low temperatures um and we'd be seeing blizzard-like conditions with that um, with that sort of depth of cold and I did want to show you this brief run just to, sh just to show you um, this sort of extreme pattern as it is for snow lovers out there, cold lovers out there, it really is eye candy so if we run for a very similar pattern to all the other uh, ensemble members and GFS runs with those quite mild conditions and then we do see that northeasterly with some colder air coming in and, and, and we have that northerly wind and then you see some brutally cold air over towards Greenland, minus 30, 850 HPA, which is not too unusual for Greenland. It gets down to even minus 40, maybe minus 45 in, in the depths of winter. But at this time of year, that's still very cold, and it plunges southwards. The brutally cold air plunges southwards, and you can see it engulfing the UK. And that is truly exceptional. Um, and daytime highs would be... Uh, it, in daytime, it probably still would get around one or two degrees, but low temperatures down into minus double digits. Just look how brutally cold that is. It will be exceptional if that did come off. It's not going to come off, but really is eye candy for snow lovers out there. P truly, truly uh, exceptional conditions we could be seeing um, if something like that ever came off. Uh, I wouldn't rule it out, but it's sort of one in a million uh, for that to come off. But now let's get back on to what's actually probably going to be happening. Um, we'll have a look at the UK um, temperature forecasts um, over the next uh, few days. So if we come and have a look, quite mild conditions and into tomorrow, we could be seeing 17, 18, maybe even 19 degrees. 
towards sort of North Midlands, um, as we see in the Fern Effect, going over the hills and towards the uh, eastern coastal areas. Could be seeing quite warm condition conditions. Further towards the coast, though, maybe only 9, 10 degrees as we have that sea breeze. As we move into Tuesday, a tad warmer, potentially for 20 degrees around London, again, northern England, Midlands, quite widely very warm. Parts of Scotland even getting up to 16, maybe 17 degrees, as well as Ireland, maybe 18 degrees at that. And as we head through to Wednesday, you can see Wednesday a bit colder in the north, especially in Scotland as those northerly winds come back. But especially in the south, as the heat builds, we could be seeing maybe 20, 21, 22, or even 23 degrees. Especially in East Anglia, central England, into the south and southeast parts of Ireland, again, still maybe 15, 16, 17 degrees. Still very pleasant on Wednesday. But as that northerly wind comes through, sea temperatures are swept away by Thursday, especially in the north, it's a lot colder. Further southward, still a little bit milder, still maybe 15, 16 degrees, but widely temperatures uh, suppressed down to maybe 12 or 13. And as we move into Friday, you see temperatures again, maybe 9, 10, 11 degrees. Uh, into Saturday, we could see an overnight frost. And into Saturday, temperatures only 9, 10 degrees. And then into Sunday, when proper cold air starts to arrive from the north, um, it could get maybe 15, 16 degrees still, with some generally milder air still over the country. But as that polar air arrives Sunday night, you can see the temperatures dropping very quickly in the north, getting out to minus 4, minus 5 on Monday. By, by Monday afternoon is evening, widely only 2, 3, 4 degrees as we see that polar front move through. Uh, and then widely on overnight uh, into Tuesday, m big overnight frost, maybe minus 3, minus 4 degrees quite widely. Tuesday in the day only three or four degrees, um, and then Wednesday again very cold in the day only again four or five degrees before it does trend a little bit milder as we head towards sort of Thursday, Friday, but still quite potent overnight frost, but maybe temperatures getting maybe to around six, seven degrees. Again, a bit far out, so at the moment we're really focusing on the Easter weekend uh, into early uh, the following week, uh, as anything beyond that is still a little bit uncertain. Finally, we'll have a look at the precipitation. Now, again, don't take this too literally, just shows you what could happen um, with this cold air. Um, and it's just really just something to take note. It won't, we won't be taking any of these shots literally probably until later this week. But currently quite dry, especially in the south, uh, north and westwards. You've still got rain. Uh, beyond that, we do have uh, a bit of rain and snow to our north. And then we have, uh, come Thursday into Friday, quite dry before that northerly wind starts to take hold on Sunday evening and then you see those are very convective snow showers drop southwards even snow to southern England and we see very very heavy convective showers quite widely and then as we head into Wednesday potential for that low pressure to develop that we saw with brutally cold air uh, engulfing East, uh, in East Anglia with that snow and we could see some quite substantial snow if it that did that did come off. If we now have a look at these snow depths, you've got a sneak peek there, there's going to be quite a lot of snow over some hills, uh, or on at least this GFS run, and then likely that is, and it is quite likely that sort of pattern is going to come off. See, quite uh, quite snowless at the moment really, there is some snow over Mount Scottish Mountains, but it doesn't show too well on these GFS charts, it really is only the peaks as we go into spring. You see snow starts to come in around Sunday night and we see widespread uh, snow with that um, over the mountains, especially even in southern England we could be seeing maybe a centimetre or two. It does very quickly melt though in the sunshine, but then a lot of convective showers around. And as we end Tuesday and Wednesday when that heavy snow heads over into the woods of Midlands and northern England, we could be seeing some very substantial uh, but temporary snowfall so it really is one to watch for now a lot of areas could be seeing some winter precipitation so it's really one to watch at the moment but anyway thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed subscribing you and i'll see you again for another video soon